Thursday, July 20th, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. Good morning, 10 minutes before 10 California time, uh, right about the middle of the trading day. And I always start out with the stock market indexes. Ooh, did I fail to share my screen? Should be now. So, S&P, sorry about that little delay. Spider, we did not, for a change, make a new high for the rally this morning. We are below where it opened. There has been a rally up to around unchanged. And it appears to be failing. Now, six days ago, I started talking about it being overbought. But we weren't really at any particularly important price level until second, third, fourth day, Tuesday of this week, still in overbought condition, starting to bump against that blue little zone, which is a very important, historically significant resistance zone. And it does go up to 462 and a quarter ish. So it's not small. I'm giving it nine points, give or take. <clears throat> but it's enough, definitely, to cause a correction to the downside, which I think is starting today. I've been talking about it starting, and it hasn't until I'm getting some evidence that it is in the last three hours. So how far down? Well, 444. There's a small gap to close. Let's zoom in on that. And it was only last week. So right here at other recent rally highs at 444.10-ish, we have a small gap from July 11 to 12. That's my first target and may be the bottom of the break. Now there's a chance we could dip off to 437 and a half, but somewhere in that area, and I choose the higher of the two, about 10 points lower than we are. Um, we're down at the moment only a point and a half. There's a lot more elbow room on the downside, if you ask me. It may try and turn around uh, 449, another four or five points lower, but I don't think that's going to hold that gap. Remember, gaps are like black holes in space. They tend to suck the price action back into the black hole in space. Eh, we had a gap over here. It was closed after it gapped up above it. And then it came down, closed the gap, turned right around and into this rally. A gap over there that was closed. There's lots of other examples. Most gaps are closed by far and away. Okay, enough said. Looks like the short-term downside correction is starting. And I mean short-term, it may not last a week. And it should provide a decent buying opportunity. Before I'm finished talking this morning, we might even see the lows of the day being challenged or maybe new lows. What about the DIA? Well, it also rallied into a very significant historical resistance area. This is going back to when the bull market after COVID finally topped out and the beginning of the bear market of 2022 started. And we did get a sell signal smack dab, on, smack dab on the exact high day on the DIA, January 5th. Almost got a buy signal on October 13th, but we did in the queues and the spider and the Russell and so on. A heck of a lot of buy signals on October 13th. It was a great signal day for us. Best on a year or two. Now, overbought at resistance and I think about to turn down. Notice it's up 2.8 at the moment and it totally a new high ground for quite a number of months since April of last year and doesn't show any signs of turning back down. But that's exactly what all rallies look like just before they turn back down. So you just don't see it coming necessarily. DIA dribbled back from the highs a little bit, popped back somewhat. And if it starts to make trades of 353 or lower in the next, well, by the end of the day, then I'd have a little bit more indications that it's starting to turn down. The QQQ, 
Oh boy. Also touching a major historical resistance area, I've been drawing in either blue or maybe a red. And it just got there yesterday and just barely the day before that, Tuesday and Wednesday. And we are now already trading below Tuesdays, which is a big rally day, below that low. Boom, just like that in one day, basically. So it is, it does have a lot more evidence that the downside correction is starting. And how far can the cues go? Keeping in mind that this is the first one to call, uh, show any significant decline for any significant amount of time. And this is a new low for the week so far. Yeah, it looks like it just by a tiny bit though. I wouldn't be surprised to see it close below the low of July 14th, which would be, I think, pretty important. Now, the first downside objective out of two gaps to close is 374 and a third. And then I think much more likely, we're gonna see it down at 368 and a half. There's a chance it could test this a significant support area, uh, but that's 360 and about two or three points lower than that. So you've got my three downside objectives. This I think is gonna be reached very quickly and easily. So I'm expecting in the next few days, uh, maybe even tomorrow, 374. That would be about a nickel lower than we are now, five points lower. Remember, we're already down six on the QQQ at the moment. Pretty weak, pretty quick today. How about futures? We've got some great new signals in precious metals, plural. Let's go look at the futures. Now, the S&P E-mini is exactly the same. That's not true as the spider. And it has different trading hours. And that makes a difference as far as signals are concerned and a little bit of difference as far as chart formations are concerned as well. So for the most part, it's the same. You've got same rhythms up and down. You've got a lot of the same stuff. But you do get signals sometimes on the spider that you don't in the E-mini and vice versa. <coughs> Into resistance, same as the spider. Starting to move back down again, same as the spider. Looking for more downside pre pressure, but we don't have the gaps because of the much longer trading hours that the spider has. So that's a tool to use in the spider, but they're not there in the E-mini. Next chart is the bond market. Now, those of you who've been following me for the last at least month know I pegged in advance the turn and the tenure notes and bonds pretty much to the damn day. Even though there wasn't a bullish engulfing buy signal at the bottom, it was oversold in a support area. And this is to the day, an 88 day cycle low that I talked about before it happened. To show you a little bit different view of this, this is the early cycle forecaster producing the green and red vertical bars, which represent a 10% time frame of the cycle 88 days. So about four and a half days to the left and right of the middle of the green area would be the zone or window of opportunity. We are looking for buy signals or reasons to be a buyer pretty much in any way, shape or form. Bullseye, 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 bullseye with a green bullish engulfing buy signal. And if there's more, maybe I'll go into more detail tomorrow, Friday, but this has been an outstanding cycle, including really good historical evidence of the cyclical highs working very well. And it's not symmetrical. There's a shorter period of time up and a little bit longer period of time down for a number of years. Next chart would be 10-year notes and the E-mini. Whoops, wrong direction. Here we go, 10-year notes. Sharp break, first time we've seen a big break since the cycle low. Now, we're not near overbought or oversold one way or the other at all. So our, our side doesn't help and oscillators in general wouldn't be helping. But I do not expect this to make a new low for the trend. I do not expect it to go below the red zone, in fact, where it had bottomed out before on the cycle low date. 
a little below support and then jump right back again. So this definitely is going to be an expected area for it to turn back up. And that's 111 and a half for the notes. Next, very bullish, by the way, intermediate to long term on interest rate futures. Very bullish. Crude oil topped out so far a week ago, overbought conditions, not a particularly fancy level of notoriety in the middle of a broad trading range we had before, generally speaking, resistance. Kind of wished it would have bumped itself against this red zone here, but eh, didn't get it. I do think it's rolling over and a close below the lows of the last four days would be sort of a convincing feature that it did turn around in overbought condition. Next chart. Heating oil, so I'm bearish, obviously. Heating oil, bad sell signal that actually worked for a day and a half, maybe. It was profit potential, not much. Popped in a new high ground yesterday, and today we have a doji inside trading range with a slightly higher quote momentarily. I'm not overly impressed. I'm going to wait a day or two to see if this thing can move up a little bit more, but it seems to be at a fairly decent resistance level. So I'm not going to be a damn bit surprised if we do see lows lower than yesterday's lows on a closing basis very soon. And that should start it to slide a little more. Next, natural gas. Nice rally. We weren't oversold, but that's the way it happens sometimes. And a very broad general area of support. We're just going sideways in this area now. I hope that it stops. I expect it'll stop at 2 0 0.940, give or take a small number. And it might be there very quickly. Um, in fact, the quicker it gets there, the better because it'll reach overbought conditions when it reaches the resistance. Great. But I'm bearish long term. Next, gold and silver today have a new ER official red sell signal. We haven't had one for quite a while. Not that that means anything. A couple of the last ones ended up being the top of a rally, for a little prelude and a small profit potential, and then bingo, collapse. Now, I'm not saying it's going to act the same this time as this last February this year. It might. Uh, heck, it could even be better. I just don't know. I can't tell. But this is not too far away from a lot of sell stops below previous lows made only a few weeks ago in late June. So that would be increasingly more bearish, breaking into new low ground for a couple, three months, which it would be doing. And I frankly think that's exactly what I would expect. I like the looks of this. I like the place that it's turning around at apparently. And um, I give it a fairly high rating although I don't rate these usually. And guess what? As an accompaniment, we have a bearish engulfing ER cell signal in silver on the same damn day. What can I say? This is a new low, new low close probably for the last two previous days. And maybe by the close, we could even make new lows and new low closes for four previous days in one day. That's not particularly friendly, although a minor support level. I'm expecting it to drive into these levels of 23.3 and lower challenge, 22.3 and make new lows again. Sooner or later getting down to, it will may take a few weeks or a couple of months to March's low where we did have a bullish engulfing at the bottom of the move. And you guys remember, I pegged the double top with two bearish engulfings and it worked great. It moved down to the minimum downside objective, which I measured in advance. And boy, oh boy, I was happy as a lark. Got a bullish signal, May 26. That's actually four or five. This one didn't work out of six signals since March that in most cases were really big turns. Are we going to have another one? Yeah, we could. Right place, resistance, overbought conditions. A little bit of divergence, new highs over four, five, six days, and not in the indicator. It's got a few things going for it. Now, we are looking for an ER3 new short in the next three days at the red dot, which could be changing prices before the close. But ER1 is already short at 25.22, looks like, give or take, a hair over 25. 
and we are profitable at the moment. ER1. Next, remember ER1 is always in. If you ever see a red bearish engulfing or green bullish engulfing ER signal. Platinum already turned around. New lows for four days, four, four or five days, and new low closes for the same. Got overbought for three days. Touched the bottom of a previous bull trend line I mentioned at the time a couple of days ago. Boom. Next, high-grade copper. We're looking for maybe a little bit more sideways, but probably a move down below the late June lows. And I am intermediate to longer term bearish. Momentarily, it could fiddle around here a little bit. Next, soybeans. Overbought yesterday, pulling back very slightly today. Nothing particularly important here. The only thing is, we are now for a few days into new, histor well, yeah, historical, basically, highs. And it is important if the bull market wants to perpetuate itself that we hold at support areas if it dips down into one or two of them. The biggest and best one is 13.0345 oh, or something. Yeah, maybe 13.10. Um, but I'm not sure it's going to get down quite that low. Uh, I would frankly expect it to try and turn around more like 13.70. And that's not too much further lower. We're 14.08 at the moment. I'm bullish on beans. I can't help it, but we're overbought for two days. And that implies a bit of a dip. I know I talked about a gigantic double top before. Hey, it didn't work. I didn't say anything about going short yet. I saw it coming if it was going to work the way I was hoping. Didn't. Next. Soybeans, oil. Minor new high this morning. Not hanging on all that well, but it is a new high close, and it could be a, above previous highs easily. This looks still a little bit friendly. We're not overbought. We still got elbow room to get up to my 75, not Wells Wilder's 70. And I learned RSI from Wells Wilder. I learned stochastics from George Lane, who are both friends of mine. So um, I like the looks of this. I think it's getting very close to a turning point back down. Would not surprise me a bit. Significant divergence in the indicator over the last three, four weeks. Sharply higher highs and no way on the indicator at this point. This is about to turn down. Next, soybean meal. Overbought yesterday, only one single day and starting to slide a little bit more today. Not much, not even below yesterday's lows, but it looks like it's about to. And the trend seems to have turned down. I am expecting a test of 375-ish and very plausibly 365-ish. And maybe it's going to break below that. We'll have to see as it gets closer. Next, corn got oversold, ends up with a good rally, came back up to an old bear trend line that was pretty substantial, pretty profound. Yeah, over quite a long time period. So I'm looking for this to start to look a lot more bearish. Looking for a test of lows. Next, wheat. Pretty much the exact same comment, except wheat today, first time, got overbought. And it's hitting, again, a significant resistance area where it already stopped a month ago in overbought conditions also. And went right back down, it almost made new lows, but it didn't. Now it came back up, and here it is trying to turn down again. This time down, it could very well break into new low ground completely and start another significant wave to the downside. Next. Hey, 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 live cattle's got a bearish engulfing ER cell signal today. That makes gold, silver, and cattle. And maybe some others before the close that haven't done it yet. But... So I'm looking to go short in ER3 at the red dot. ER1 is short right about exactly where we are right now. No profit, no loss on that trade. And we always have a protective stop in. That would be initially, and it may have moved already for ER1, down. But that's the beginning of the uh, stop or stop loss, you like to call it. I like protective stop. So new short sell signal in cattle. Last couple of ones worked okay, not great. They made some money. Next. Strong hogs. 
up at a little resistance. Probably should have put a, um, a line, horizontal line across this approximate price range. That looks pretty profound, actually. And I don't think this rally is continue, going to continue much. I would expect it to stop and turn right back down again real soon. Next, we have a new high by a squeak again on OJ. Will it turn into a double top? Yeah, maybe. Is it overbought again? Yeah. And at the same prices that it topped out before in overbought conditions? Yeah. Is this a real good setup for a double top? Sir, sure, looks like it. Are we going south at the moment? Nope. So early stages of a possible, but don't get too bearish too quick. It's going up on the average. The trend is up and the trend is your friend. So I'm going to wait to see if I get any conf confirmation of any kind uh, is about this uh, about this thing turning over and starting to slip back. And if it does, I think it easily would come back to 260 and a little bit below that just to begin with. Double tops this size would cause if it turned into a complete double top like silver did um the downside objective would be in the ballpark of uh, the low 200s next coco yeah bull market looking for new highs but it might dribble back a little bit for a day or two don't see anything terribly wrong here we got kind of close to overbought and we did make a new high but this is not particularly Impressive if I was trying to be bearish, so still looking for maybe a little bit of a dip, but new highs soon. Big sideways, boring cotton market still, but hey, today we're the first time overbought. Therefore, and around the highs we saw before, sounds familiar, other markets are doing the same thing. So this is a good candidate for it to start to roll back down again and get back back to where it was three or four weeks ago, oversold at 77. What can I say? I need a major upside breakout or downside breakout to get excited about this. So far, cotton's been very boring for quite a while. Next chart is sugar to sweet and a minor new high. We're crawling up underneath the previous bull trend line, sticking our nose into overbought territory, almost not quite, and in an area, a broad area of resistance. This double top, by the way, since we're talking about them, had a minimum downside objective of right here, and it basically made it almost missed by just a squeak. And the downside objective was met for all practical purposes at June 29th. So I think this is going to run out of steam. And frankly, I'm looking for a turnaround and then new lows below 2180. Coffee. Two buy signals. Neither one of them really worked. Yeah, one of them a little bit. Um, trying to bottom out. I got no signal at the moment. But we're coming back up nicely today. I'm going to wait on the further comments. This is looking like it has some chances of turning friendly. I wouldn't say bull market, but I'd say a healthy rally up to 170-ish. But I can't be very decisive it could easily flip-flop and start closing below 154 and a half, in which case uh, probably come all the way down to 137. And we're back to bonds and the mini. Thanks a lot. Talk to you tomorrow, Friday. Have a good day.